The question is, uh, if you want to have a national conversation, or for that matter, a global conversation, uh, on issues that directly affect uh, the wealth and power and prestige of incumbent elites, uh, how do you do an end run around those elites? Because uh, they are not going to be pleased with the direction of the conversation. Uh, I am encouraged by the fact that uh, uh, technology itself, it's, it's not utopian, and it can be manipulated like anything else, but communications technology has really reduced the number of bottlenecks uh, in public discourse compared to even when I began in journalism and public policy a couple of decades ago, uh, there were very few, very concentrated uh, organs of opinion, uh, both uh, print and uh, uh, TV and radio. Uh, now, if anything, you, you have this kind of anarchic Wild West. The challenge is to filter uh, what scientists call the signal from the noise out there. But that's, I would much rather have that problem uh, than uh, essentially having a system of the kind that we used to have, where if your, your viewpoint did not please the editor of the Washington Post, the New York Times, or the Wall Street Journal, then no one would ever hear of it. Uh, so, I, so I think already uh, information technology is, is more democratizing. Uh, the problem is it, it's in, it also allows a lot of nonsense which was filtered out by the same centralized system. That was one of the virtues of the old system. Uh, the crazies were there, uh, but they simply did not get published and, and they did not get on the radio and they did not get on the television. Uh, and again, to me, that's a problem that I would rather have than the opposite. I think the present situation with uh, particularly audiovisual technology, I'm a great fan of Marshall McLuhan, uh, who predicted uh, uh, the age of audiovisual uh, uh, video replacing uh, the Gutenberg era uh, of uh, print or, or uh, print in, uh, based media. Uh, so I think that age is upon us. Uh, but it will take some time uh, to work out the appropriate structures. If, if you look at the beginnings of the Gutenberg era, the print era, uh, it was total chaos and frankly a lot of lunacy uh, at the very beginning of the print era in Europe. Uh, after all, uh, Gutenberg was German, was the first thing that the, the Germans started printing. Tracked by crazed preachers on both sides, Protestant and, and Lutheran and, and Anabaptists and others, all accusing their opponents of being the Antichrist, stirring up uh, uh, this really, you know, crazed uh, religious fervor that led to the religious wars in the Thirty Years' War. Uh, so they're bad things sometimes uh, when, when you have uh, unregulated media. It doesn't necessarily lead to this nice, harmonious, democratic conversation. Uh, if you go ahead a century to the uh, 18th century, uh, you have Alexander Pope, the British poet in the Dunciad, uh, denouncing published books. He thinks they're destroying civilization because all this trash is being published. Uh, by the 19th century, you get what we think of as the structures of, of the modern print era. You have magazines, you have book reviews, uh, you have uh, uh, all sorts of brokered and moderated conversations, you have different genres, you know, ranging from short stories, you know, to long multi-volume treatises, you get encyclopedias. And, and I think, you know, that will evolve. The audiovisual equivalent of this is, is evolving now. Uh, and you just have to tolerate uh, the chaos and the waste and the uh, uh, anarchy, uh, and sometimes, frankly, the evil. A lot of the stuff that uh, is on the internet now uh, really uh, uh, is is whether it's racial hatred, uh, calls for jihadist revolutions, you know, violent pornography, uh, you name it. Uh, this is stuff that ought to be filtered. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily shouldn't be suppressed, uh, but there needs to be some kind of, of filter so you can separate rational, reason-based argument, you know, from crazed hate-mongering. Uh, but, but that's the challenge with uh, every medium, you know. The, the radio was used by Franklin Roosevelt in the 1930s, you know, to encourage uh, uh, faith and democracy in the United States. And it was used by Mussolini and Hitler, you know, to spew racial hatred and, and uh, national chauvinism. So uh, every generation is going to have to wrestle with the the good or the bad uses of the technologies at its disposal.